Hello, everyone, and welcome to State of the Realm, your weekly Final Fantasy XIV podcast, this time with no Borf at the beginning of the show. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Final Fantasy XIV and XV collaboration today, and also kind of just talking about some recent news that you've probably heard us talk about a few times, but we're going to be getting a new outlook on it, one that we get uh, seldom, you know, maybe once a year, sometimes twice a year. Uh, if you've read the title, you already know who's joining us. Anyway, I'm one of your hosts, Michael, Mr. Happy Poporum. Of course, joining me is Sly, a.k.a. Sly the Fox, a.k.a. Sly, a.k.a. Gray Fox, a.k.a. You my boy, Blue, how you doing? I'm pretty good. No borfs. No borfs. Well, we don't have access, uh, thank get... God. Borf. Borf, borf. <laughs> borf. That, that dog knew every answer, I promise you. He could have whipped our ass. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't disagree. But you're the winner, yeah. and you know what? We got to move on from that. Till, till next time when I win. Slide, don't worry. But okay. we also have a special guest who, again, joins us once every year, sometimes every, every six months or so. Depends on what kind of mood I'm in and if I feel like asking him. But you guys request him fairly often, and this time I promise we won't give him lung cancer. It's Mr. Burn, aka Magic Man. What's going on, oh, man? Oh, yeah. What's up, Big Daddy? How yeah. you doing? Yeah. How you doing? No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. He's, he's half daddy now. Yeah, he's <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you just tell the man who made it what it was? I'm pretty sure he gets to determine that. Yeah, he's a, he's Big Daddy. He'll always be Big Daddy. It's it's great to be here. And Sly, hello, Sarah Sly. I didn't know if you were gonna be coming from work or not, so not to nope. be outdone. Just in case you had. Oh my god! I, oh my I god. did bring a tie. <laughs> oh you know, so god! That I didn't bring the class of the joint down there. That would be. You know, on on Mr. Happy. To yeah, do. I was gonna say. So, but nice to see. Do, do you have one on? It doesn't look like you. Okay, no, I don't have to no, wear. It I'm today. wearing my fan right. fest shirt today. We'll, put, the, we'll yeah. put that one over there. But just in case, I'm I had wearing, it ready. I beat Siryu. I wasn't even there for that, but thank you, <laughs> Mel, for bringing it back for me, and thank you to the North American community team for providing it to me. <laughs> And I do appreciate uh, last show not bringing special guests on that will talk PvP to the point that I smoke myself into a stupor. Uh, so that is much appreciated. Thank you, sir. But it's good to be here. Good to be here. It's good to have you. Uh, now, a few things before we get started. Uh, since you haven't been on since we changed the way the show works, Mr. Byrne, but you, I know you watch the show. You know at the start we got to make I do. sure I do. we do our special sponsor call outs. I mean, not like that's news to you. You've, you've, been, uh, you've been down that road before, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So as a reminder to everyone, we do uh, two. We're doing two giveaways at the moment for State of the Realm. First is from our sponsor, Steel Series, which we're in the headset right hand. Got the mouse. I got the keyboard. They've been a sponsor on my channel for a few years, and they've been doing giveaways for State of the Realm for almost, I think, a year at this point, I think coming close to it, where you basically go to the description of the video, enter the giveaway there, and you have a chance to win. And they ship to most countries, so as long as they ship to your country, then you're eligible. And it must be 18 or over. So thank you to Steel Series for those monthly giveaways. But we also have another one that Mr. Byrne made a confession to me about before the show started. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't forget that NVIDIA also provided us with some uh, 2060 uh, NVIDIA NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 graphics cards giveaway. We gave one away already last week. We'll be picking another winner next week. So go under this video on YouTube or go to last week's video and enter there for your chance to win. They ship to most countries as well. So again, as long as they ship to your country, you should be fine to enter. Mr. Byrne told me he entered. I did. I did not win. <laughs> If you had won and I and you were on the show this week, would have been that would, just have, that would have been amazing. Poetic. I would, if I saw your name, I actually wouldn't have told you until today. <laughs> I, I was just, like, I, you know what? I want one of those. I'm not really sure. Like, well, I'm not technically an employee. I still qualify. Like, I could still register. You know what? I'll let him figure it out. Here we go. I <laughs> just get my entries in there and let him figure it out. So for anyone who's new to the podcast in the last year, I want to actually do something a little different also in that I want to give our guests an opportunity to describe who he is. Because we often have guests that like a lot of the 14 community is like very familiar with, but you're old school 14 and then you come on for these events. So not everyone knows who you are and I want that yeah. to change. So we're going to let him do his 
shout out <laughs> now. And he could do another one at the end of the show. But just to introduce himself, for those of you who may not be familiar with one of my old co-hosts in the previous podcast I did. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I take, I, I don't know. See, I don't tell you this, uh, Haps. But what I do is I take credit for everything you are today. Now, I've never said that to I, you. No, but I, I tell, agree. I tell other people that. I'm like, yeah, he wouldn't be shit without me. <laughs> no, that's not I, the way I, I say it. I tell them the same but, thing. It's okay. So I, I, my name is Mike Byrne. I go by Magic Man uh, on everything, Twitter, YouTube, all that fun stuff. Uh, Final Fantasy Nut. In fact, uh, P- Happy's going to let me plug some Final Fantasy stuff I'm really liking a little later that I think I'm so sick of hearing, oh, they have a card game? Yeah, they, they do. We're going to talk about it later. But uh, I've been in 11 and 14 and every single thing since I was a baby, loved it. But I started doing 14 content for Game Breaker back in the day. And I knew Haps before he was Haps um, with some 11 content way back in the YouTube days when there was no 14 yet. Loved his content. We started a podcast on that channel when uh, Reborn came out. I petitioned to get Haps as my co-host. Got him on board. We started that, and he has run with the torch since Game Breaker has gone kaput and kept the podcast going. It's very near and dear to my heart every time I see an episode of State of the Realm because I'm like, I know where that started. So, <laughs> yeah. But no, i a big fan of, of Haps. He's a great guy. Sly, he's, you know, he's an all right guy, too. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah so okay. anything Final Fantasy, I'm into. And so here we are. Yeah, and you love to, like, hate all the things that I love, too. Usually. Yeah, yeah. usually. That's, that's unfortunate, but now that, you think of, <laughs> now that you mentioned that, it does usually work out. Like, you love Hildebrand. I am lukewarm on Hildebrand at, at the best of times. Sly looks offended. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't just, say I really can't talk, talk shit because I only did Hildebrand last match, so I can't <laughs> I've always been Luke will lukewarm on him at the best of times. You actually think the game has PvP. Um I on the other hand recognize that the game does not. <laughs> Hold on, is there an eclipse outside? Let me just see all that shade right there. Jesus. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I like okay. to eat steak while we do this show. You do not. Uh, so, yeah. I'm there, there, is quite a, uh, there is quite a few things. That, now, there, to be fair, there are things we both enjoy, too. I am sure we both enjoyed the nostalgia trip that was Eureka while, <laughs> not, while not actually enjoying the content all that much uh but appreciating its roots in some final fantasy 11 stuff i'm sure it brought back memories for you it had to of because it certainly did on my side uh but yeah we, we'll find common ground this episode i'm sure let's just burn pagos was so bad i actually logged into final fantasy 11 and made a relic in that game instead of doing pagos when it came out and I can't blame you. See, we agreed there. I I was like, this makes me want to go on some NMs. Not in this game, though. <laughs> this makes me want to go do something in an entire... Well, at least I can take solace in the fact that it's the same company getting the money at the end of the day. <laughs> so, yes, I am, I'm totally with you there. Oh, yeah. We'll find common ground somewhere Sly you need I, to play you need to play the card game you need to play I have cards it's just i know i mailed you some you son of a <laughs> i have them they're in a box <laughs> they're in a box from when i moved i just don't know which box <laughs> okay if you don't play this if you're a final fantasy fan and you don't need, at least own some of these to collect i don't know what you're doing uh i am really big into the final fantasy trading card game and haps g- was nice enough to give me a minute or two because i get all the time Oh, they have a card game for that. And yeah, so let me tell you this. If you have ever played Magic the Gathering in your life, you are 10 minutes away from learning how to play the Final Fantasy trading card game. Uh, There are obviously similarities because it's a trading card game and Magic's the big daddy of those. But there are key differences that you will really enjoy, particularly if they're things you didn't like about Magic. If you don't play Magic, you're 30 minutes away from doing And if you like this, like, here, take a look at this. Can you see who that is on that starter deck? Yeah, it's Lise. 
Yeah. So check this out. I would take a different pack. What's the other one? have? All on? kinds. Of, the, these are the two most recent starter decks. The, What's the other one, one have? So. I don't want her. All right. That's better. The better. Model. All right. But so if you like stuff like uh, interactions and things, think about this. They do all the different sets from Legends to 14 to Brave Exvius in the latest set and all that stuff. But there's a lot of nods to us fans here. So, for instance, Lease here cannot be played to the field if you control card name Yida on the board. And so for Final Fantasy 14 fans, they know why she can't be played to the field if Yida is on the board. For non-fans, it's just an ability. So there's lots of cool stuff like that. You got your dice. Oh, baby, look at those. You got your second anniversary card boxes. Hell yeah. You got your... Oh, you got your you got your Final Fantasy sleeves. Oh yeah, yeah. Yida is more useful. You are right if you're a player. Uh, tons he of fun. He was making. Yeah, okay. I thought you were saying in the card game she's more useful. <laughs> she is. She is. Uh, <laughs> she is more useful in, in the the card game. Uh, she's much more meta. But seriously, check it out. It's a lot of fun. You're not going to spend thousands of dollars like Magic to get into it. Uh, you can make a meta deck for a very meta deck for 50, 60 bucks in some cases, a little bit more if you want to spend a couple bucks on some other cards. North American competitive seasons really, I mean, they've been doing some Square Enix events uh, at the beginning of the year, but it really just kicked off in earnest this past weekend. So you too can qualify for nationals later this year and then get into worlds. We celebrated last at the end of last year, Mr. Alex Hancock's Mr. Cool himself, big fan taking the world title. So God. And if you're in the Pittsburgh area or on the East coast, tons of Facebook groups to follow, including one for Pittsburgh, get in, we'll get you cards and get you all set up and you can start playing and, and finding out lots of content out there too. So let me plug one more thing. Haps. I make my own FC FFTCG content on my channel on YouTube, and I'm sure there'll be a link somewhere for that. But uh, just announced today. I am now signed up with the Esper den, which is a content producer for FFTCG stuff. And I will be making content there, but you've got tons of resources. Check out the damn game. I love it. I love it. I love it. And the art is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So I have a question. Is there a hosh font card? <sighs> I, I read the chat and I had to, I had to know. Do you not I, yet? Okay. Well, as soon as there is get a spare and put a stick of pencil through it. <laughs> All right, I will. I will do that at the request at the request of whiskey caramel in the chat. <laughs> somebody, somebody is pointing out the quality of the cards themselves for <laughs> you collectors out there. Uh, they are by far uh, above, you know, Pokemon, uh, Yu Gi Oh, Magic: The Gathering. They almost feel they're not. They they almost feel like a plastic coat, but they're not. The, strength wise. They are really, really, really nicely made. Not, not cheap uh, cardboard. Although it is cardboard, they just make them very nicely. I can't... My whole family is addicted to the game. And it, it That's just gets fault. better. And Yeah, it just, get, it just gets better and better if you've played Final Fantasies because you'll see all the nods in the uh, Amano art and all the, the abilities. You'll go, oh, I, I know why X-Death has that type of ability. It's, it's a lot of fun check it out uh half an hour if you've never played and check out my training videos my my videos are longer but they're made more for competitive people uh but they will teach you how to play it's a lot of fun do it do it do it and sly thank you for throwing my link in there that was awfully kind of you sir yeah i was just gonna throw it in a youtube video and maybe at the end he had it like right here during the pitch i'm glad i let you do that pitch at the beginning and not at the end because by the yeah. end i'm like all right i'm gonna fucking leave shut up <laughs> <laughs> now i'm like okay good he threw on an extra like six minutes onto the show now now if we have now if it's like a shorter show <laughs> i've got a little bit more meat to it you know it's perfect all right with that gentlemen uh now burn i no doubt we're going to be poking your brain about a few things that have come out in recent times but i think we should probably hit on the topic of the title of the show which i know all three of us have taken part of and that is the final fantasy 14 and 15 collaboration it's here it exists it is it is two and a half years after 15 came out and after its death knock when it comes to episode Arden being the finale. <laughs> we finally have it. Arden, by the way, is a bitch of a card. I'm just sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. He's a bitch of a guy in like a... he's a bitch of a card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's our death knocked. 
See, somebody got it. I'm so <laughs> happy, people. And I'm like, and then, dude, I had, I had actually like three, four punts. I went unappreciated. Like when you were showing off the cards, I said, dude, you're decked out. Nobody. Right, no, nobody yeah. Got well, it's not that they went unappreciated. There just wasn't much there to appreciate. No, there was oh, plenty to appreciate. You're just, you just only I'm come jelly. here once a year. I'm so jelly. It's, it's all right. All right. So before we get into the specifics of the event and some of the things that have happened around it. How do we feel about it? This was very much like the old Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 11, Dragon Quest 10 style collaboration, and not like the Monster Hunter or the Garo one at all. How do we feel about it? Let's. I'll start with Sly because you haven't had a time to speak at all yet. Sly. Right. No, I just he's the guest. He, it, so. he did the TCG thing, and just for that, you go first, Sly. Um, in terms of the comparison, which is the uh, 14 uh, side in 15, it felt. Again, it felt a little underwhelming, and I feel like 14, because of certain, um, you know, legal and, you know, technical limitations aside, uh, gets the shorter end of the stick in a lot of these collaborations. And I felt like, um, you know, this wasn't, um, this was one of those cases. Uh, as far as the story, it was okay. You know, I mean, the, in the end, the reward was definitely worth it. Like, I already had my MGP saved. I was able to get, you know, the hairstyle and everything and the car, of course. And, you know, went parking lot pimping in uh, Blackbrush, you know, because that's where everybody is right now. Got to go parking lot pimping in Blackbrush. Um, but, yeah, the um, I kind of wanted a extreme version of that Garuda with the with the action. That would have been fun. That would have been a fun little addition uh, to see how people kind of utilize it in in a EX scenario. But other than that, I'm not too disappointed in it. It's a little bit of a letdown compared to what 15 got, but you know, and that's the voices would have, the voices would have been nice too. You know? Yeah. Did you know true story in the 15 side of things? Uh, Ray chase, who does Noctis's voice 15, his wife did the voice of final fantasy 14's Garuda in the 15 side of the collaboration. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Speaking of, I just met him uh, this oh, past wonderful. weekend. And had him sign a Noctis promo card. <laughs> Any place he can. He's going to get those teeth. It's like you <laughs> puns. You got to get them in anytime you can. <laughs> he was at he was at uh, Teco in Pittsburgh this past oh, yeah, weekend. Yeah. He um, was super nice. Super yes. Nice. Ray, Ray is wonderful. Um, had the pleasure of meeting him quite a few times. So, yeah. I, I kind of feel it's like... I will say that one big thing for me with the 14-15 collab on the note of feeling incomplete is I feel like if that playing the 15 one without playing the 14 one feels the same way because it's literally mm -hmm. one story that starts in 15 and that you're hit, that you're alluded to halfway through in the 15 side. Like, Oh, he's like, I don't know what just happened to me. It feels like a dream. And then it comes back and goes like, you awoke me in the other world. And you're just like, well, I know what they're talking about. So I had to wait for like this little finale right here. And there's a bunch of little nods to the 15 side of the collaboration. So I kind of feel the same way. I would have liked an extreme too, but it was it was a good use of of assets. I feel at least in at least in Monster Hunter, you didn't have to do one side to do the other. Like it, it felt like each had its own, you know, its own thing. And like if you miss one or you haven't done it yet, you don't feel too bad. I mean, it's just its own thing running in parallel. What about you, Burn? Because we were still doing uh, we were still doing shows together when I think the original thirteen one came out at that point. So uh, how are you feeling about? this 14 15 club uh i i tend to agree with you uh, that 15 got the better end of the stick but that is not to say that i did not enjoy the the 14 side of things when it launched today i actually I, i'm kind of glad there was no extreme version of this lie i kind of disagree with you a little bit there uh not that i wouldn't have wanted to see one I, or do one that would have that would be awesome though but i i feel like like the monster hunter one um it, it's it's actually part of like the mentor roulettes and the the standard version. I wouldn't want to go and do this over and over and over again. I wouldn't want the regular version if this was like a four man or an eight man affair rather than what they did. You know, just you and and Noctis going to do it uh, instead. I wouldn't have wanted this to to be in the queue because the whole mechanic was the zipping around, and and that was it. 
I just liked it as a little event, a little something different. Go get yourself a cool ass little mount, the first four mounter in the game. Uh, go take ridiculous screenshots with it and have some fun with it. So I'm glad that it wasn't more involved. Not to say that I wouldn't have enjoyed it if it were, but I don't feel like it was lacking by not being more. I think for me, the big thing is I'd actually like to do the final fight again, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, but I can't unless I want to do it on another character. So right. at least like like while the event is in town, not like a permanent thing. I will say this, though. In my travels with Noct against the demon, and then uh, it, it didn't happen with uh, Garuda because there was a whole different mechanic using the glaives and stuff like that to get in and out of AoEs. I, I guess there was one, what, line AoE in, in the Garuda fight, wasn't there? Uh, anyway, in the demon fight, you have the, the pillars, you have the electrocute uh, AoEs and everything. I actually was running around trying to kill Noct. <laughs> by stacking circle AoEs on top of them. The bastard just would not stay still. Like, I don't know how they raid in Insomnia, but that ain't how you do it here, brother. You stack up those <laughs> AoEs here, and you just nuke each other and then yell at the healers when you die. Knock this. Don't worry about it. You don't got to move. He knew his mechanics. I'll give him that much. I could not get him trapped in a situation to, to nuke himself. So... Sly, you wanted fold on the show? That's the closest you're going to get is that statement right there. <laughs> I'll take it, but I still want fold. <laughs> no. You know, it's fun. we're going to talk about killing Noctis, oddly enough, uh, after uh, we get through a few points. I know, really weird segue to go with right there. Um, right when the servers went live, though, we got our first taste of Shadowbringers, actually, because um, it didn't work. <laughs> and he was broke. He was broke. And there's the fear that that's going to happen with Shadowbringers, like it did with Stormblood. We had, you know, there was Raubon, there's Pippin, and now we have Garuda Ultimate. Where now, with for the first, I guess, hour before they fixed it, which to credit to their credit, they fixed it really fast. Um, when you completed the Garuda encounter, you would not only be 90k, but you weren't allowed to log back into that character. <laughs> It was just, you were just done. That was it. It was, it was it was like you died in like a hardcore game of Diablo three, and they're like, "Go make a new one." And uh, I'm I've already scared because this is while we don't have the server split yet, and I don't know if this was NA exclusive. I a whole, big thing we're hoping for with the world visits, which come next week, a week from today, is that it will alleviate issues like this. Do you guys have any faith that it will? No, no, it's gonna, it's gonna be a just, it's gonna be a shit show when a Shadowbringers launches. Why would you think that it wouldn't? So every MMO in the world launches has issues. Great, yeah, we know that. But this one's had it when it launched, then for a long time after it launched, then in Heaven's Word, then I mean, we got the the Raubon Extreme fight. I mean, that was fantastic. Then, then in Stormblood, yeah, of course we're gonna have it in Shadowbringers, and I wasn't, I was a little bit surprised that this one even had something really, because there really wasn't, to Sly's point, a huge content upgrade where you had to redo duty finders and things with a, an extreme fight. So I was a little surprised that there were issues with something this relatively small. Uh, and I know they weren't exactly related to the event, but they they were in in uh, in in the grand scheme. Of course, we're going to have issues with Shadowbringers. That's why you have uh, Head Start, right? They're like Head Start, so that you can actually play on the day it comes out. Yeah, I suppose. And point chance bring out it wasn't server related as to why we couldn't log in, but right. it just it immediately ignited the start of Stormblood issues. Hell, I had a three minute queue to get into something in the Gold Saucer. I was like, sorry, there's not enough. <gasps> oh, no. There's not enough not Leap of Saucer. Okay. Yeah, Leap of Faith. Yeah. But all Yeah, but the instance ones, if that's already a problem, yep. I'm concerned. Leap, if, that's what leap leads of Faith to that took, me, took me seven minutes to, to get in, um, in the queue. What happens if you queue and the NPC disappears? Um, I don't know. You win a prize. I, I don't. Stuck in limbo? Maybe I'll send you a starter deck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a prize. Yeah. I just wonder if it would like kick you out of the queue or when you go to press yes, it'd be like, no, <laughs> I have no idea. 
I, I waited seven minutes on a on a on it before the show. Uh, I just hope that. It doesn't. We'll talk about we'll talk about our predictions for next week's world. But Day then Air Force it. One, I was instantly fine. So yeah, it's the Q, re- you know, the Q li- related ones. It's all right. I like Leap of Faith, and it's busy though because it just looks like bees, yeah. like in a, at yeah. a, at like a fucking beehive, <laughs> like ants in an ant hill. It's 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 a sight indeed. I like going into that one and spamming chat with things like "You pushed me off the ledge" and getting into arguments <laughs> with people on whether or not our characters can collide with each other. <laughs> You're bad. <laughs> Not like at myself. jumping, but like <laughs> 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 maybe you're bad at jumping. I know like Sly I is not a big fan. Oh, I love that one. I uh, no, I'm I have no problem. Oh, Sly- I did a whole video on the uh, Kugani jumping puzzle on cheats on how to do it. So no, I love that type of stuff. Sly hates jump puzzles, and every fiber of his of his being hates them. Slide yeah, and leap of faith is, is easy. Leap Why of faith fuck? is easy. I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's easy. But when you put like when you put something like that on Kugane Tower, like why the fuck, dude? Somebody did Seriously. it in like fifty-two seconds the other day. Just get, just fall, just do what they did. <laughs> just <laughs> target slash follow. <laughs> yeah. It'll take him 52, it'll take you 53, no problem. The good news is, someone could get in a car, do it for you, and then they could just carry you up the whole way at this point. <laughs> it's, I'd actually, I want to see someone do Kugane Tower in the car, <laughs> the whole way up. <laughs> you can't even use the car in Kugane, you'd have to do it in like, uh, what's the zone? I guess you could do the one in Shirogane, the smaller one. Uh, see, and Neo Omega, you're saying exactly the right thing and that's what my one of my videos did it was abuse the hitboxes because they made no sense on Kugane's that's you could use ninja I mean, you, could, you could use ninja yeah. to abuse a few in the uh the summer oh, i hope we get the jump puzzle back this summer i like jump puzzles sly doesn't why why sly why don't you like jump puzzles because platforming in this game is fucking terrible <laughs> yeah, he's, got a, he's got a pretty good point. He's not yeah. wrong about that. I, I, I it was bad argue. in fi- it was you know what? Since we're talking about the collaboration, the Pitios Ruins was shit in fifteen two because of the same problems, but I've knocked this Prime like, I need to walk six feet forward every time I turn. Prime <laughs> example, when you have to take the tail in the back of Shinryu EX, how many people have died just from that simple ass jump? Not me. If something goes wrong. You fucking shit. I mean, not you. (laughs) you Anyone who misses that jump, you don't even have to get to the end of the tail to do the jump. You can jump off like way in advance. I've seen people die from simple shit like that. Like, it's comical. I see people people die in in Cape Westwind. That doesn't mean that AoEs are shit. shit. (laughs) 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 That's not fair. That's not fair at all. Yeah, you really are a people debuff magnet, Sly. You really are. <laughs> That's it's a good thing too, because you have the the thing for it. Yeah, I have the I have the actual debuff for it. Yeah, there you go. exactly. All right, so the event starts off fairly simply. We go visit our old friend uh, Kippy, who luckily still remembers me from Lightning Returns. She remembered me for one of the previous events too, not too long ago. She just remember anytime you have to do a quest with her, she remembers you from Lightning Return. She always references back to it if you've done it before. And I wonder how proud they feel that they're like, oh, watch, she remembers. They're gonna be they're gonna think it's so cool. I'm like, she remembers. She remembers lightning. Me too. They haven't done that event in years, so it doesn't really matter, Kippy. She's got a good memory. Yeah. And then we uh, we go out to Noctis in uh in Central Fanolin and I was surprised at how good he kind of looks as a, I guess, kind of like a base character design. They very clearly just took Final Fantasy XIV's, I guess, character models. It doesn't really look like he has a unique model like like another yeah. character might, like you know, like uh, Shantoto as a Taru Taru. Um, but he it it looks perfect, like not out of place at all. Surprisingly, considering what he is. I don't know if you guys thought that any of this. I don't know if you guys thought any of this. I thought it all actually looked like it fit better than I thought uh- it would. Yeah, I, I found myself doing the same thing in the first cutscene that you interact with him in the regalia there. That I was like, oh, okay, well, he actually does look like Noctis, and he looks like Noctis in the 14 world, not this 
15 version put in here that looks way out of place or made to look 14 and doesn't look like Noctis. I thought I you're right. I think they did a, a bang up job meshing the two I- into one there. What about you, Sly? How'd you feel about knocked in the car when you got out there? Did you feel like this doesn't belong at all? Or has the motorcycle kind of, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> lowered your expectations with that? No, no. I, I thought he, he fit pretty well. Like, I, I was a little bit impressed. I didn't say anything about it, but in, in the back of my mind, I knew, like, yeah, like, they they got his image pretty fucking well with, in terms of the limitations, again. I don't so think so much as limitations. I was just, I, I was kind of glad they just used everything about his character is possible to make mm-hmm. now that we have his hair and his outfit. Like, it didn't use, right. like, assets that they had to, I guess, kind of uniquely make for him. He just is a, he's just a normal-looking guy, like, in, in the terms of a Final Fantasy. You know? Did you just call him Noctis Basic? Yeah. He's a basic. Uh, hey, and some of the NPCs think he's pretty sexy shit. Yeah, they, he got hit on a lot. Yes, he did. Although There's lots chapter- of... Even even your own character, I questioned some of the animations my character did. I was like, "Are you? Am I making eyes at Noctis here? Don't don't do that! Don't do that!" Yeah, I, I was just about to bring up how Chats mentioned that it's like a dating sim for with Noctis because as as they're bringing up now, you're giving him bedroom eyes. Oh yeah, and they even they they throw shower him with free shit. <laughs> They're like, hey, model this for us. He's got a fine physique. I'm like, damn, you just, you just shook hands right? with him. You don't even know his name yet. Where are these ladies in my life? <laughs> you looked around like you were you were. I was making sure my wife wasn't in the yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, you just see the top of the stairs. You just you see. Excuse me. <laughs> it's like, guys, I gotta get off the show now. It's I have been, to. Go, I have to go fill out this paperwork my wife just handed me. It's been it's been fun, guys. I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And uh, after that, uh, one thing that was kind of interesting. So you only need to be level fifty and be through the realm reborn to get with this. And as such, I forgot that Sid had a different outfit in a realm reborn. Because he shows up in his A Realm Reborn outfit after years of seeing him in a completely different outfit. And it was uh, a bit jarring to me. I know these are non-canonical, but I guess it does kind of place it directly in that time frame of right. old. It makes me wish the characters would not wear the same clothes all the time. It's the super anime trope thing that I'm, oh, I hate every time. Just like, yeah, this is my clothes. These are the only things I wear. So... Uh, I don't know. I, I th- It seemed like a lot of little details went into this. And while I only took about 80 minutes to complete it, I guess that's kind of the thing I stopped to appreciate the most about the event. That and a four-seater mount that is going to create thousands of memes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So many memes. I don't know if you feel like, dude, my favorite one was going into your... I went into Eureka as soon as I got it, and I was high to lift. Pretty much. <laughs> Now, see, I that wasn't my choice. Somebody else came up with that uh, Tweely in my chat. I was like, I need a name for like a like a ride sharing service in in Eorzea, and so everyone went e Uber, and I'm like, what, like Eorzea? That's all right. I I don't have anything better, but that sounds terrible. It's almost like high to lift, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> you win. That's that's the name. I just go from NM to NM carrying people. Like, everyone, <laughs> get in. Hop in. Make sure to give me five stars on high to lift. And then you make them do the emote where they pull out the phone from signing up for the app. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so for the actual contents for the event, we had a fate. Yep. Which only takes about five minutes to respawn. Like, not even exaggerating. And it's pretty... Basic bitch fate. You got to do it yep. three times. But this fate was the second most valuable thing about this event. Because it came with six orchestrian rolls from that fate. And I don't know if you guys have... How much you guys have listened to the Final Fantasy XV soundtrack. But anyone, you can say whatever you want about XV. That's a damn good soundtrack. Tis. Reach. Tis. So much so that the car having the diner theme was a very welcome change to every other track I have for 
every other mount in the game. I will say this. There was a part of me that wanted the regalia to play music like a car radio, like it does in 15, except operate on you know, the scrolls you have, you know, the orchestration yes. scrolls that you had. Like, like you collect the songs in 15 and then you can play them on the radio in the regalia when you're driving around. I thought it would be cool in 14 if it did that, but you could cycle through the music but it had to be orchestration scrolls that you had. I thought that would have been really a, a neat little, a neat little nod to the the two games. I mean, people have wanted a portable MP3 player for orchestrians in the game anyway, like outside of that. Like people want to just be able to adjust background music in the game so they can listen to one track while they're doing another piece of content as long as they they find it fitting. So, right. I think we eventually get it. Do you? I don't think we do. I don't think they. I, don't think I, I think we eventually get it. What makes you confident we're going to get that Sly? Sly, you're the still, and this is coming from the same guy who's still, you know, <clears throat> tackle box guy. So, what do you makes you think we're going to get this? I've given up on that. <laughs> so why do you? Have <laughs> I've completely this? given up on tackle boxes. But I like we have the technology. I think we can, you know, definitely get something like that for for mounts and everything, or for just walking around. Like it's, it seems simple. It seems simple, but we don't know that it is. Yeah, we're, we're not programmers, so. Yeah, no. So I, I, I like that. The only thing I would change with it, there's two tracks I would change. I would change Eureka to be literally anything else because <laughs> I'm tired of that song. And I'd change any fight that uses Thunder. Any fight that uses Thunder. I don't care if it's Chrysalis. I don't care if it's Behemoth. I don't care if it's Avni and Eureka. I don't care. Stop using Thunderer as a theme. Please. I'm done with it. Okay? I don't want this anymore. First phase of, of UCOB, get rid of it. I don't want it. Okay? I'm very papaya. passionate about Repeat. Yeah. I'll I'll <laughs> I'll set Thunderer instead of Thunderer, I'll set Papaya. I'll zone into Yukob Papaya. Papaya, 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 papaya. I think way back in the day, like rolling into Twintanya when that was the big thing and having the papaya music playing would have would have undercut what they were going for a little bit, I think. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. Dude, at this point, I just throw on the Octopath OST and say, you know what? Fuck it. I got this <laughs> instead. As long as it's not Thunderer. I just don't want to hear Thunderer ever again. Just stop using it. There's no reason why in 4.5 they're still using Thunderer. I think you're entirely way too angry about this. No, you forget that I did Twin Tanya for two months when 2.0 first launched, when the fight was fucking busted beyond all hell. And four years later, you're still crying well, about four it. Four years later, they're still <laughs> using it. At least with Manipulator, the suffering I went through there, they stopped using that theme until, like, at the start of Midas, you, or at the start of, of A8, you hear it, and that's it, all right? I'm just tired of it. I don't want Thunder anymore. The Hildy music, I very seldom hear, so I don't mind that. So much so that it's my sub sound on Twitch. <laughs> so I actually hear I actually hear it a lot. You probably so hear it a lot more. I <laughs> hear it more than most people do. Oh, man. Uh, so that's the first part is the fate. Everyone, make yep. sure you do it three times. It's very easy to get gold, and you can buy the orchestration rolls in Black Brush or in the City States. The second part is a little solo instance against one of the Death Claws in Final Fantasy XV. They went with one of the lower level ones, uh, Itsu something. I don't remember. It's not Naglfar, who is a super boss in uh, in fifteen. And at this point, I don't know about you guys, but I'm watching Noctis a little more closely. Yes, this is where I started in combat watching what he's doing. And I, when I tried to nuke him. <laughs> are you well okay, you're, I'm watching him for a different reason. No, I wanted him dead, but he was like, <laughs> Oh, I know mechanics, I can raid with you. And I I'm, was like, that's not what we do here. I'm watching him because we have the trust system coming out in a few months. And I wanted to see if there was any sort of AI present in his gameplay that I might expect from my trusts or well, if they're that's, be more like you know, squadron. that's essentially what I was doing. I was testing the, you like I literally, he would space out the AOE, right? The, what was it? Um, the, the lightning AOE. And, uh, and I would run to try and overlap him and he would react and try to move away from it. And then I tried crossing paths with him. 
where if I saw him start to book it, I would cut him off and try to run in front of him to see if he would run into mine or keep running or get stuck uh, and not know what to do and end up eating both. And I liked the reactions. Like when I when I started crossing in front of him, he just blew right by me and continued on his way. It was like he was anticipating where I was trying to go. Those were the things I wanted to see. Can I kill this guy? Can I kill him purposely? Uh, can is he going to be slower to react than this? Now that doesn't mean that in actual content, because let's be honest, that fight wasn't content. There was, there was two AOEs you had to worry about, and then pillars. That was it. Um, that I don't know. I'm hopeful that this translates well into trusts and four person dungeons and things like that. But I wanted, I did like seeing the first foray into how can I get this AI to screw up um, to see if it can react to what's happening rather than just work on a predetermined AI path for a specific fights. I'm a little skeptical, but it was pleasantly surprising the way he did react. Sly, what about you? Or do you think that this is any indication of trusts, I guess, workability? Or do you still think, I think they're still just going to be like squadrons and literally they're never going to target trusts with anything. But didn't you say, wait, say your squadrons were a little bit stupid at one point in time? Your squadrons are always fucking stupid. I have to do everything for them. When you're doing squadrons, AOEs don't target the squadrons because they're too dumb to get out of it unless you move them. Every mechanic targets you, and any mechanic that requires, like, two people doesn't happen. Hmm. So... I thought... I thought he was a good boy. I thought Noctis was a good boy. He, he, um... I I don't know about putting him on a, like, static or anything like that, but, you know, he's better than some some Waffle House raids I've had. Like, 90% of Waffle House raids I had. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys... You, you travel around with people that die from jump rope. Can't jump over a damn tail. Yeah, he's got a good point. Again, magnet for yes. the people debuff. <sighs> Slice. No, I did see water. chat saying that they had knocked stack on the same pillar. That is one that I did not try. I watched to see where knocked went first and then went to the other. I should have tried to, okay, if that's where he's going to go, I'm going to try to go there to see if he would go the other way. Uh, so if you haven't done it yet, try that one. Out yeah, he just he goes to a set okay. pillar and then you have to take the other one. He doesn't give a shit what pillar you're in. <laughs> He'll just stand there. <laughs> it's kind of like how in um, Gimlet Dark, there's a point where you and two NPCs all get an AOE. The two a a NPCs, no matter who it targets, always go to the same two spots. They don't care if you're standing there. That's just where they're hard coded to go stand. Yeah. So it's kind of like that. And that's what I wonder, like, are they going to take the effort to hard code these kind of things into trusts for the Shadowbringers dungeons? Or do they go the squadron route where they just don't get targeted by anything? And it's all on the player and the onus on the player to actually be the brains of the whole operation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the way it's going to go. <laughs> it's just, I guess for that me, doesn't mean that's the way I want it to go, yeah. but I think that's the way it's going to. It's just I don't see any other kind of, I guess, way to go about it. Because with squadrons, they excuse it by saying they're dumb because they're like amateur adventurers. Right. They're rookies. Oh, and now if they're going with the 11 way of doing trusts, these are basic. This is basically not the actual characters. These are like magic, I guess, uh, versions of them based on a, yeah. a, a degree of trusts. They're scarecrows. The yeah, they're scarecrows. So I guess maybe you could fly because they're scarecrows. They're too dumb to really know how to act. But I'd like to believe that if I had a trust of of an NPC that they're at least smart enough to do the basics. Because I've seen them in, in instances before. Right, but then you have to... You, you have to write a script then for basically every freaking dungeon. But they're not available in that many dungeons. According to them, it's Shadowbringers content. Initially, initially. I don't think they go back and ever make them available pre-60. From 80 to 90? Yeah, but... Right, but then you're going to have everything after Shadowbringers presumably be able to do this, and I just think that adds compounded scripting time that you don't really need to add just give you the squadron control over it and do it yeah it's not what we would like but it will function for what it's meant to function for yeah i guess i just want them to be less dumb <laughs> that's all i, I ask agree. i guess if they're super powered like the squadrons are with like plus 60 percent damage and the ability to do a half second gcd overpower <laughs> I don't know if you've ever done the half second GCD overpower with the with the Marauder squadrons, dude. I would run four of them if I could. 
Every time you press engage, <laughs> disengage, engage, it resets a squadron's global cooldown. Regardless, did you of say ability. engorge? No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I really didn't. Though. Yes, oh, okay. yes. I, I thought you said engorge. Sorry. No. If you ever engage, do engage, en engage, oh, engage. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, no. gotcha, if you I ever gotcha. do engage, disengage, engage, it resets the GCD of all your squadrons. So if they have instant abilities, they'll use them immediately again. And for the Marauder, the first ability he uses is Overpower if it's in melee range. So you can basically have like a point five. Like, <laughs> And they're all, and they'll all hit. So it's like mad AOE damage. It's pretty nice. So if they can do that, I'll be okay with it. But if they can't, then I'll be even more upset. Just saying. Uh, and then the last fight we have is the Garuda fight. Now, I'm not going to lie. After 4.5 part 2, with mm -hmm. people having issues with the last solo instance there, and dying, mm -hmm. and failing DPS checks... Mm -hmm. Happened a lot with a lot of people. I had uh, joked that if there's a solo instance for Garuda, mm -hmm. that, you know, hopefully it's one people wouldn't fail. I still don't get this. I've seen a lot of reports of people asking how to beat it. I've got how do you keep Noctis alive? Yeah. In fact, the chat just brought up a forum post or a Reddit post where somebody said he kept dying because they weren't splitting the AOE. You know, the one that targets Noctis, that is a split damage AOE, and they were just like, good luck. And they're like, he keeps dying! I don't get it! <laughs> oh, I have to make a guide for this. <laughs> I don't want oh to make God. a guide for Please this. Please do it. Please I am going to do it. Do it. <laughs> I'm, it's going to be a I'm, mean guide. No, no, don't no, do I'm that. Gonna, I'm, I'm literally gonna be like, no, meme, meme. So this is how you play Final Fantasy XIV. There's no. these things called attacks. No. Right? no, no, you gotta have a lot more fun with it than that, brother. Meme. This is this is where you make a guide showing people how to roll a white mage <laughs> so, <laughs> so that they can heal knocked. Please, please do it. Luckily, all you have to do is go white mage in this event and cast benediction on him if he's getting low. Yeah, and you'll have so, no right. problem. Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, bringing you another guy. This time we're taking a look at Garuda for the latest Noctis event. So what you need to do is go to Gridania, roll yourself a white mage. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need white mage for this fight. You could go Scholar or Astro, but white mage is clearly the best. You can even go Reports blue mage for this. Reports from the internet say, don't even try this shit if you're tank or DPS. Just roll yourself a white man. <laughs> Mr. Happy's Guide to Shit You Should Have Known 50 Levels Ago. <laughs> oh my god, please. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. I had one part that almost killed me, but I think almost everyone I've seen do it has like taken enough damage to so go like, whoa, that was scary. And there's one point where you have to use your warp strike before an attack mm -hmm. finishes casting. It keeps pulling you in over and over again. Yes. Same. And you just have to Same. warp strike out. And when even when you warp strike out, it takes like 80 to 90% of your health, even if unless you're a tank, yep. and it does last. It's scary, right. but I people I know how many people have said, I just keep getting pulled in, I don't get it. I got pulled in, and after I just used second wind and bloodbath, and yay. You know what okay. else you can do? You can go blue mage and just use diamond bath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another option, yeah. Somebody told me that too. Yeah, Blue I kept getting pulled back into it too. I was the I I went on warrior because I that's I think I had a at sixty or sixty one, and when I saw the first quest offered experience because it was tuned down, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm gonna do this on something where the experience matters, even though it's paltry. And uh, yeah, so I kept getting sucked in. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my. And then the one, the, there is another moment though that catches you off guard, particularly if I was like, <laughs> like I was doing it, I was here and on my laptop I was working I was trying to do some Excel stuff and looking over at the fight and doing something uh, but there is an active time thrown in there <laughs> that yeah, the I turned I turned around and I'm like oh shit there's four seconds gone uh oh <laughs> and try to beat the button there so there there's two cool moments in there but I I mean I one shot at it I didn't think anybody was gonna have issues with it I thought it was really easy that's because it like, is. Like, almost disappointingly easy for how long it was. 
Yeah. Um, I thought it went on longer than it need needed to if it was going to be just that 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 uh, that little bit of scary. So whatever. I, I can't understand having problems with this one. No, no, I I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand what the pro- I can understand if you're like fresh 50 and you're like I'm level 50 60. Maybe I could I could understand that. I mean, just being like brand new. But there are people who played for like five, six years who like can't do it. Yeah, and it's one of those I mean, things too that there, I'll give you. There are two that you could fuck up, and you're gonna take a you're gonna take a, a death um, if you're not paying attention, or if it just strikes you. What am I supposed to be doing here? Oh, it's too late to do it. But I can't see dying more than once well, or twice on this. I can't see dying to the point that you take the time to go post to Reddit about you dying. I that just defies comprehension for me. Well, the only reason I mention that is because for the mechanic where you're supposed to link strike out. You're supposed to do it at the last second, and you don't take any damage. But right. most of the time, you, it doesn't matter. You'll just survive with like yeah. some of your health. Mm-hmm. But if you're if you're item level fifty or sixty, and you mess that timing up, you're just dead outright. Yeah, basically. Right. So, or you're blue mage, and you just cast diamond back and ignore it. So, go level <laughs> blue mage and get diamond back, and just spam water cannon. Otherwise, fuck it. Don't go learn all these spells. I don't want you going to do that. Just go get diamond back. It's the only one you actually need. Uh. Or just follow Happy's guide and roll a white mage. <laughs> yes, or just or just go or just go white mage. <laughs> Your competition won't have that guide. I promise you that, sir. That one is exclusive to you. Yeah, I need to go get footage of it on one of my alts. Maybe I'll do it on like the JP data center, so I have like the latency working against me. So maybe like the timing gets screwed up for the last part. For the Are you trying to mission. give yourself a challenge? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, doing wow. doing the bard opener on J- on JP Ping has been a fucking struggle and a half. Okay, I'm like I have double weaved this by a second and a half at this point. All right, excellent, excellent. Yeah, I had to start using a VPN for that again because it's not been good, Sly. But I get what Sly's kind of saying about wishing there was an extreme of this. I still wish it was like solo, like it is with Noctis. I just wish there was a, an ability to challenge it at a higher difficulty. And I think that comes from the 15 side of the event, personally. Because the 15 side has a Garuda extreme that is incredibly loyal to the Final Fantasy XIV equivalent. And I guess because it has a source material to pull from, it's probably a little easier to, I guess, imagine it and make it from scratch. But it was really good. It was incredibly well done. If you don't cheese it in Final Fantasy 15, it's one of the hardest yeah. fights. I had to well, cheese it. But that's, that also is where they were able to put it in each game, though, by the way. I mean, it's put in 15 at the point where you are uh, relatively powerful and anybody that's doing the event is going to be at exactly that same or just slightly better, you know, uh, uh, gear stat wise in 14 they they backed it up you know it's down at 60 so because yeah i mean you want this to be accessible to the largest portion of your audience that you can but if you made it that 70 duty and put the, the more challenging stuff in there first off you've asked out anybody that isn't 70 yet and like it or not that's still a big portion of the game's audience is sub uh, is sub 70 uh characters and you've given them a month to do this so yeah, I would have liked it to be more challenging. I don't know if I would go all the way to Sly's uh, stretch and put it in extreme mode on it, but I think they found the delicate balance. Let's put it down at the 60 mode. That way we're catering to everybody that's playing Stormblood. Uh, because if you have Stormblood, you are there. Uh, and let's you know, maybe cheese it down a little bit to get a wider audience where you didn't have to worry about that for for, for the 15 side of things. You could put it at the higher end of the difficulty spectrum and hey, whenever you get to it, you're going to get to it and it's going to be at that relative power of character so we can tune it for that relative power of character rather than this, which has to be tuned for all of us at 380, 390, 400, 405 and... 200 and 205 and 210 so it's just a wider audience that they had to to take into account here and i think they struck the happy medium as best they could and it ha- pleased me and i hope it pleases that level 60 player and of course it's brought up it is also permanent in 15 not yeah. limited yeah so well that, that was my it. point is that content is there and it's going to be there if you can't do it now fine level your ass up come on back and do it they didn't they didn't have that option with this event on the 14 side of things. Mm-hmm. 
I always want more. That's all it comes down to, especially because we still don't know when the next live letter and all the job abilities are. And so I'm just like, I need I need some meat. Give me some meat. And back to Steak of the Realm. Yes. And welcome to quotes out of context, because that would be phenomenal. Give me some meat. <laughs> Mr. I Happy think that's perfectly fine in context. <laughs> in and out of context. Literally, I have a quote in my Twitch chat. Meat goes in my mouth. I turn into a different person. That's Amen. like, that's, there's, you don't need context for that. Uh, good thing I brought the steak, my friend. Good thing I brought the steak. I'm making a nice juicy, I made a nice juicy berg last night. I'm going to make a nice juicy berg tonight. Yeah. yeah nice that's yeah. what i like that's what i like to talk about anyway um so it all wraps up and then you need the two hundred thousand mgp and I, that was when i've learned a lot of people don't know how the gold saucer works i learned the same thing and like i was kind of shocked and, like wait what I, I i understand this more than failing the instance because this is very much out of the way for a lot of people the quest for it isn't even one with a plus sign which is, you know, how most people designate a must-do quest. So, no. and then there's people who think that don't know all the buffs to MGP, the challenge logs, the fashion reports, like how accessible all these things are. Chloe, tournaments, triple triad cards, all of these things are there. And everyone's still like, oh, dude, 200,000. That's impossible in six weeks. And I'm like, wait, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. What are you doing, Sly? Uh, oh, Evander in chat. That is amazing. Sly wishes the Noctis event had higher stakes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, Sly, what were you looking for? Uh, a shout out to uh, Kaoka Star with the. Wait, 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 wait. This is the one. Um, yeah, Kaoko had one, like, Kaoko put up a, um, no credit, no MGP, no problem. In just two easy weeks, you could walk away from the Mandeville Gold Saucer dealership with a new regalia. And Kaoko just gives you, like, this little handy dandy PDF sheet that they put in, like, Twitter, and it gives you all the, the, um, Things you could do in the gold saucer to get MGP in, like it says, two weeks. So if you need this, there it is in, in chat. Go do that. Yeah. It's that simple. Like, I just, like, for a while, all I did was just mini crackpot and got 10,000s every now and then just saved up. I just do my challenge log every week. I don't even do the Chocobo Racing one. And you could honestly just not even yep. try to do the winning. Because Chocobo Racing on its own is great MGP if you're on the higher ranks. But personally, I don't want to fucking try to win. So I just send my Chocobo off on 20 AFK races and I just walk away with whatever MGP I get because I just can't be asked to give mm-hmm. a shit. Um, other than that, it's literally like five matches of Lords of Verminions 20 is 27K. Uh, I think a handful of matches, I think 10 successful wins of Triple Triad in the Battle Hall is like another 30K. Oh, I think you have yeah. both, don't you? It's play 10 and win 10. Yeah, but there's some, there's some that want you to do it in the Battle Hall and some that just want you yeah, to yeah, do yeah. it. So if you do all of them in the Battle Hall... Then yeah. that's another bunch there. The yeah. fashion reports literally sixty. Even if you are like me and don't give a shit about the fashion report, it's ten k for giving no fucks. See yeah, this, and I can't even be bothered to get that. See 10K. this cup? And it's empty. <laughs> this is this is the fucks cup, and this is how many fucks you need to give. It's empty. Okay. Yeah, I can't be bothered to even register for fashion for the ten k and two hundred k is not a problem. You are fine. You with six weeks, you are more than fine. <laughs> you could even just if you cared about the fashion report, doing that over four weeks is enough to get you everything. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's how easy it is. <laughs> I choose to do Lords of Verminion and win the fourth match in like in like 55, 60 seconds. I do that five times. Sixty seconds, I mean six minutes later, and I've that's twenty seven thousand MGP. Yep. It's, it's so easy. I'm going to be doing my own thing on that because now I feel like now I've under now I understand people don't know how like content other than the main scenario is really like how it works in the game. And I, you know what? I kind of blame Square Enix for that (laughs) because there's a lot of shit to do in Eorzea and they do not do a great job of making you aware that most of it's there. And we have a hub, a HUD thing that takes you through quests you're supposed to know about. 
And yet people don't know about treasure maps. People don't know about MGP. They don't know how to earn it. They don't know even where to get it. And I feel like that's a bit of a problem. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything you... you and is there any... Sly, is there anything that someone doesn't know about in the game that you've, you've heard recently? Like, oh, does this, this exists. Really? And you're just like, how did you not know that? Well, I can't say the same thing because at near the end of 2.0, I'm like, wait. Yeah, but you didn't start maps? playing. You, but this is the thing. You didn't start playing until the PS4 version came out. So you, this is right, like post right. 2.4. Right. And and even near the end of that, I'm like, wait, there's there's treasure maps? Wait, huh? What? Oh, I can make money off this? Oh, okay, thanks. And as far as like somebody telling me they there's some... Even if that were the case, I couldn't say it's like a veteran player. I think I think it's like one of the newer players who just didn't know. Yeah, and I'm and not saying it's and that's the thing that I'm getting at. The point that you're making is it isn't. I'm that's why I'm saying this onus is on Square Enix for this is because mm. it's not that old players don't know. It's that newer players aren't finding it as they play. Well, the 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 other side of that is new players not wanting to read. To be fair, I mean we do get. They not only have the quest icons themselves been updated to mostly, as you pointed out, mostly have the plus sign when it's going to add something to your game, whether it's a duty finder option, a new feature or anything like that. Since there are so many of those things, though, it is very easy to start tuning them out. And those are really the only I'll tell you one that is really, 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 really big that I do see level 50s asking about and how new they are to the not and this housing whether or not the game to be fair, actually they really has don't housing need to know about that. <laughs> yeah they they may or may not actually need to know about that. <laughs> true i mean true but yeah it's you still but does this game have housing yeah i mean well it, it has the tools to do housing but no you can't go do housing but yeah that is <laughs> that the, i mean that is one that yeah that's all they get. They get a and that's and that's a that's a big feature. And you know, maybe someday it'll be decent. But uh, yeah, there's actually a point that we're going to talk about with that coming in the uh, near future. Uh, but I think that covers almost everything with the uh, event. It's unfortunate that the hairstyle I'll never see because I in six years haven't unlocked the aesthetician. <laughs> so there's a quest. It's got a little plus sign. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is i know about it look <laughs> out for those happy while you're playing look out for those little playing quests oh just so you know uh burn it hasn't happened too often but if you it, you might want to turn your uh your audio gate up on discord because like occasionally like when you lean past the mic sometimes it like cuts like half a syllable off just so you know it's happened like maybe twice the whole show so don't All worry right. about it too much there you go there you go thanks man yep. thanks man Thanks. I know about it. I just don't care about it. Like, you don't care about Fashion Report. Neither do I. I don't care about the... I like my sideburns. Have, Thank you very much. But I have it unlocked. We'll see. That's, <laughs> that was your first mistake. That's your first mistake. Well, as soon as it's unlocked, you can do it. If you never unlock it, you can never do it. I don't care about my in-room. But I, I have it unlocked. I care about my in room a lot. All right? There's only one thing I care about my in room. And that's the damn armoire. No, for me it's the cutscenes. I need to go in there. <laughs> oh yeah, good call. Good call. There's actually I do I have more uses for the in room than mostly. I can only play parlay. Evander. Oh my god, Evander's just on point in chat today. I care. I don't care about PvP, and I have it unlocked. That was your mistake. Go unlock the damn anesthetician and get your uh, get your hair. I think I have it on one of my alts. Get your hair That's in. good enough. Get your hair in. I have it on one of my alts. I'll just do the event on that alt and never do it on my main. Don't shake your head no at me. <laughs> Listen, I've, ca I've kept the cigarettes. Person. I've, kept, I've kept the cigarettes out of your mouth until now. Don't make me change it. <laughs> oh, you. Oh, you. Okay. Uh, with that, I'd say we're probably, probably about 30... 30 minutes left in the show approximately. So I want to do my uh, mid show credits. We'd like to thank our Patreon sponsors midway and sly. I don't want you encouraging any bad behavior. Look, ma, no hands. That's that in no way makes me feel better about the situation. I just, I want you to know that. 
Okay. So at the halfway mark of the show, we got to thank our Patreon sponsors for supporting us through hashtag demonetize. There's quite a few new names that actually popped up that I don't have on the list, but I pulled up a, I pulled up my actual, uh, I guess, alerts so that way I don't miss the names. Uh, they've just, just been supporting us through the bullshit that is YouTube, and we appreciate it very much. I don't know how else to put it at this point after so many weeks. The bullshit that is YouTube is uh, general. I'm sure Twitch loves that. That's what I say on the podcast every week. They're just like, fucking right. You're fucking right. It's bullshit. You know it. Uh, so we got to thank our patrons of Light first. We have Kuja Cross on Genova, who you guys should, who you should be all be very familiar with, as well as Karnai. This is Kuja Cross's picture right here that he provides every week. He's a screenshot master, and I'm fully expecting Final Fantasy 15 screenshots next week. Uh, and then we have Karanai, who I still have this picture for, because he hasn't given me a new one, of uh, my boy Jimbo. Jimmy. Jimmy! Yo, Jimbo, yeah. Jim! Yeah, that, you know, him. That's, that's him, and that's all he is. I promise. That's all he is. So, uh, thank you. Oh, for... wait, we're not, we're, not, we're not doing spoilers? Okay. I mean, we, I don't give a shit we do spoilers. <laughs> but, We've been having them shit in for, like, months, so... I, yeah, we don't but know. at that at that point in the fight though, you still don't know. Like if you don't know, but like you technically don't know by that point. So uh, it's a dope barding though. Be sure to go get it. Uh, we also have to thank the rest of our patrons. Right, we have two tiers that we shout out on State of the Realm. One is the standard, and one is the elite tier. Now I do have uh, the new name here. I'm going to read that first, and that is Benjamin. I'm not going to read the whole name, but that was someone who was new yesterday. So wanted to make sure that I had them. And we have the long list that closed for no reason just now. So I need to grab it again. For no reason, I didn't press anything. It closed. So now I have it. There we go. Hashtag perfect. You guys, I don't know what you guys are pop champing for. I haven't started reading the list yet. I hate, I hate all of you. For our elite sponsors after Benjamin, we have Batar Garl, <laughs> Yufu Hikachi on Excalibur, Scumlord. It's... It's Sumama Rio of Gilgamesh. Ravik, Card Jackets from Fanfret, Sigurd Drig from Balmung, Edge Faron, Ultros, Jerica, Emma Zernik of Org 15, Chris Ozuki, Crazy Demeter from Midgard, Rajavetis from Cactar, Carol, Seraphine, Edelis, uh, Senshi, Shadow Link on Tonberry, Dom, Sukaway from Genova, Lamilia, Nell of Maker Summer, Cern, the Fennel Family, Johnny Yatsu, Kifkin, the Great Eagles on Exodus, Kadeoshi from Kajada, Skia Symphony from Ragnarok, Wendler, West Coast, Perp Warrior, Iagic Red Seal on Exodus, Lexi Valentine, and Tarn the Revived Sipsy from Zodiac, Sarah Kamen Tribes from Genova, Renault, Chikar, Goichi, Balfour of Siren, Phoenix NFC on Goblin, and Siren from Zodiac. We have our elite sponsors as well, and there are two names to add to that. We have Noel and Sumbla. Got to make sure I put those on after we're done. And it, I swear to God, I thought it closed again. <laughs> we also have Shauna Senpai of Behemoth. Uh, Zosame Hasha of Fanfret, Beatriz, Kazuzu, Vapatiyama of Diablo, Shadow Ari of Brynhildr, Zeravire of Coral, Alchemy, Shinko, Casual Heroes FC on Migrant's Armor, Tatach Daka on Hyperion, Kanazuki from Genova, U Starlon, on Coral, Sothal, Sarah Frost from Behemoth, Holy Tabasco, Crass 015, Serenity FC on Ultras, Kat Kazuma, Agnes Banker from Excalibur, Vlester of Fanfret, Not Quarters from Excalibur, Krobus Moonscar, Private Mikey, Nanaki, Osami, Rudy Rudiger, Kalak, Monroe, Jr., Kiltastic Jones. Thank you to our Patreon sponsors. Why are you smoking when I look back? <laughs> I actually hadn't looked at you the whole time. I didn't even talk about PvP. What's going on? You now you're just using me as an excuse so you can blame it on you blame me on it for your for your wife. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> they I, talked PvP. <laughs> there were other players' names involved. I thought they were fighting. Somebody said PvP in chat. I just lit up. <laughs> I feel like that sounds like some of my actual PvP partners. Yo, I just lit up. Oh, dude, sorry. I fucked up. I'm so high right now. <laughs> that sounds like WoW PvP. You know how many times that fucking happened to me in WoW? Or if teammates like, sorry, dude, I'm so fucking high right now. And I'm like, god damn it. I don't want PvP with you guys anymore. He keeps taking a pull every time I say PvP. I don't call you Mr. Burn because of the cigarette. I don't call you Big Daddy because you're big. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a good point. I'm wide at least. <laughs> got me there. Can't debate that. <laughs> He's got a good can't, I can't fight that. <laughs> hey, man. I have to serve some cap of prides in the chat. Right oh, Jesus. Let's, let's get those eyebrows down. Yeah. <laughs> no, you gotta do it like this. <laughs> right? Oh, boy. That's what I'm talking about. 
Okay. Jesus. Now, if you would, Ooh. now if you would like to continue the, the show itself, we can do that, or it can just oh, end cool. it after that. The sponsor jams are up. Yeah, the sponsor. Yeah, the sponsor jams are up. So. I was jamming, man. That was it. Was like a, your own little rap there. Dude, I already got Garuda Ultimate. Yeah, rap I didn't know I got I Bur- Burn Omega Ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> this is beginning and the end. Little did I know that it would start with burn. It would also end <laughs> with burn. Oh, man. Okay, so that uh, covers pretty much all we have today. But um, obviously, when we have burn on, we, we seldom have them on. So we kind of almost need to do kind of like a year in review. Oh, that's not my choice, by the way. Happy. No, like, I just don't invite I'm him until people this. bother me. I'm not doing this I just Because here's the thing. <laughs> he uses me as an excuse to smoke, and I don't want to be responsible for that. I'm going to smoke anyway. It's just whether I'm inside or outside. So I'm not using you for much. Only I'm using you smoking. for location, location, location. <laughs> yeah, that makes me feel so much. Okay, I don't want his children to smell smoke. Ah, okay. All right. Fair there, you there you go. I'm a there good you. guy. So I don't invite him, mostly. <laughs> That's the reason. Yeah. That's the reason. That's the public reason. <laughs> the, pri- the private reason is I think he found out. <laughs> uh he's you he must be wishing i was gonna be male Vieira. that's for sure. touche as they say touche that's not how they say that okay. oh i'm sorry i mispronounced it yeah i know uh anyway so one thing that we like sly and i like to do whenever we have burn on is pick his brain about recent topics you know, whether Uh-oh. they be topics that we've covered Uh-oh. on the show before or just something that we think will piss burn off, we except PvP because <laughs> that's too obvious. Um, <laughs> to be fair, most things, like I said earlier, burn doesn't like. So sometimes we like to get him to talk about the things he doesn't like. He'll take all the things you love and not love them, which hurts you. Oh. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Everything I say I like on the show, he's like, that's stupid. <laughs> and I don't know if he means it or not. <laughs> so, Sly, any topic you want to get Burns' thoughts on that we've had to... That Let's had to go ahead and rip off the fucking Band-Aid. Um, Here it comes. Yeah. So, those... Uh, the Mel Vieira. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Kind of leaned into yeah, it already. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. no, nah, just rip the fucking band aid off. Like, yeah, the Rothgar and female Rothgar and male Vieira. Uh, yeah, quite frankly, I really couldn't care. Uh, couldn't care less. I agree with <laughs> Happy's previously expressed opinions on this one. Uh, one, I had no intention of making either, so really doesn't indicate or impact me at all. Um, I do, I will say, though, that I think um, adding in Rothgar seems like, more than an addition to the game, it seems more like a cover your ass. Uh, and so I, I didn't like that one from Square. I I don't like doing the free-to-play stuff on MMO Bomb as much as I do. We see a lot of gender-locked games, right? And I'm not one of those players that cares about gender-locking. If I like the models, I'm going to... I'm going to play the game. If I don't like the models, then I'm not going to play the game. Uh, whatever. Uh, but that really bugs some people, and that's fine. That's that's their thing. They want they want the choice. They want to do whatever they want. Fine. What I don't like is games that don't do gender locking, that then do gender locking. And on the free to play side of this, Terra is the worst offender of this game, where every class they have put out has been one. Uh, gender and one uh, even race um, at a time and one class at a time even. So I don't like that type of stuff. I liked when we went back and fixed that (laughs) in A Realm Reborn. And it came, you know, patches later and they, hey, we're going to fix that. So now you can make a a male Mikote. Okay, great, fine. I, I thought that was cool. I don't like that they're doing it again now. I think what they should have done is just put female Vieira in and called it a day. Um, Rothgar feels jammed in because they wanted a, to be able to say they were adding two new races instead of one. That looks good when trying to sell expansions and to have a male option to this female only option. 
I also agree with Happy that I hate when they do... Oh, well, there's lore reasons for this. Yeah, because you fucking made them up. You got to create... It's not that these things lore exist in real life and you're just emulating. You made the lore reasons specifically because you weren't doing both. Personally, I would have been fine with, oh, ma- uh, female Viera. Mm, I don't like that you fix that in the past just to reintroduce the same problem now, but I don't care because I'm not going to switch. Uh, and Rothgar seems jammed in, but at the end of the mm-hmm. day, I don't care about either. Right. Now, if there were, if there were a legitimate lore reason for this and they weren't just backtracking because, you know, you know, dev reasons and just said lore, but there was an actual legitimate lore reason, would you be able to se- accept that? In A Realm Reborn, no, because it didn't okay. start that way. Uh, yeah. In Eleven, it very much did. The game started that way with uh, Galka and, forgive me, Happy, the female. Um, Mithra? Mithra? Mith- Mithra, thank you. Um, with lore reasons why from the start you weren't going to be able to do that. And while then it's still just a resource thing, we're going to make lore that fits us not having to do this. They did that and they stuck with it. I don't like how 14 in Reborn fixed the female-only problem by adding male just to reintroduce the problem to expansions down the road with a different race. I think that's asinine and dumb. Mm -hmm. Do do, Do I think you'll get female or male Viera at some point? Yeah, I think you will at some point. And boy, I think that really leaves Rothgar out in the cold because I don't think there's going to be a demand for female Rothgar. I don't think there's going to be a demand for male Rothgar. Um, (laughs) Dude! Surprise! So I probably, like I said, I would have said, hey, just do Viera. If you're going to stick with the whole lore from 12 that, you know, the females are much more prevalent than the males, then fine, go ahead uh, and stick with that. You're you're not even making up the lore. You're using 12's essential built-in lore. Great, go for it. I think I, Rothgar I could have done without. I, I think they could have just done female Viera and maybe in the future introduced a male one. I, I don't think it's worth the selling point on the expansion box of, hey, two new races. I was just surprised we had this discussion a couple weeks ago that they didn't just go with Lupin, which they already have models yeah. for. Yeah, yeah. They yeah it's already in there. More, more animal-like. I don't know, maybe the heads were even worse. They wanted to develop a head. Because Hrothgar and Vera won't have all helms immediately. They'll have circlets, and I think any full helmet will work on them. But certain yep. types of helmets won't. Um, it's ones that kind of fall in between that mix. And so uh, I wonder if that was harder to do with the Lupin head. Because Lupin head's like tall. Yeah. Like this. It looks so, like it's like a very equine. It's very horse-faced. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how Ethis feels about them, too. He feels they're like, there's like, it looks like a dude in a Lupin mask, not... I, and I see people in chat saying exactly like the, the point that I was trying to make on Viera is that, yeah, it's a lore reason, but you have the crutch of saying it's not our lore reason. It's Final Fantasy 12's lore reason and Ivalice's lore reason. Um, and so I think, OK, not too many people would have. It, it wouldn't be what it is today. There still be people pissed because it's the Internet, but it wouldn't be what it is today if they would have just put in female Vera and said, hey, man, that's Ivalice, not us. Yeah. Uh, that's their thing. Uh, we're just respecting that lore. I think adding Rothgar almost admits we could have made male Viera, but we're not going to, so we made something else. And just why why just skip that and just put in mm-hmm. female Viera and later put add males if you want to. See, the thing with Galka going back to Eleven is their lore was a lot more interestingly done in a way that it was more acceptable. Um, yeah, for those who don't and it was 11, done that way from the beginning. Yes, but it, so they they are actually not male or female. Their appearance is predominantly male, but right. they are actually um, asexual and they they don't they're not birthed normally. They they resurrect. They basically die in a spot and they come back as a new thing. They believed in it and it's worked for literally thousands yeah. of years. So there's a much different, and then the, the Mithras are the traditional males are rare kind of thing. Yep. Um, so much so they eventually, but they eventually did show one, and then all the females are thirsty for him, like the whole time. Yeah, and his name is Noctis. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think his name was Noctis. But when it comes to the point of you talking about the male beer, I, I, I chat brought it up too. I honestly am seeing more people upset there isn't female Hrothgar. 
Because I think people had the really? expectation of no male. Like a lot of people said, oh, there's no reason. Why would there be male Vieira? Like a lot of people said that as much as people are like, no bunny boys. Urgh. There was just as many people who are like, there was no fucking bunny boys in, in any other Evil East game. Why would they be here? Yeah. Like, I, I'm ready for that expectation. But with Hrothgar, as soon as they saw, oh, they're the Ronso. Wait, yep. there's a shit That's ton a, of female exactly Ronso. What female the Ronso. Exactly, yeah. exactly my point. I think you could have done female Roth or female uh, Viera and just called it a day. New race, female Viera or just Viera. And most players are going to know, oh, yeah, you don't you don't see a lot of male Viera. That's why we can't be all, you know, a bunch of male bunnies fucking running around all over the place. We get it. And then the new people. Oh, well, that's from a you know, they're pulling from the, the, the source material in Ivalice and Final Fantasy 12. And oh, OK, I think adding Rothgar just kind of called attention and male only Rothgar called attention to the fact that there was no male and clearly there could have been from a development standpoint. They just opted not. To. I just think they should have gone with the Vieira females, called it a day. And there you go. And then how about this? Introduce Rothgar in the story throughout Shadowbringers and uh, put him in the in the the next expansion as male only. Once the lore is established and doesn't seem like this, we made up a lore reason because we only had time to do the male mod, which is what it feels like right now, and that kind of feels icky. And and I understand why people are upset about it, but for me, I don't freaking care. I don't care. <laughs> Neither do I. I'm not rolling either. Me neither. Besides, I get a new race anyway. I get to play Dwarf. <laughs> yeah, with your taped on beard. Have fun. Dude, you know when, when 5.3 <laughs> rolls around, I have no doubt there'll be the Crafting Beast Tribe, that they will be quests in 5.3, and everyone will get a beard. I mean, to be fair, you can use the Santa beard now, if you really want it. If like, you have it, you can just use the Santa beard. But like, I have no doubt everyone will get the helmet with the beard by 5.3. That said, I think in the future we're going to end up with female and male of both at, at some point. Uh, I yeah. think it'll be Vera first, and, and then Rothgar females will come at some point, if at all. But I wouldn't be surprised if at some point they both came. Sly, anything else you got for him? Are you ripping off the yes. other Band-Aid? Or are you just going to go straight for Band-Aid number two, or are you going for something else? I'm, Chat I'm said there's a new PvP map, is there? Yeah. God. Wow. Yeah. Oh, shit. All right. All right. So, Congrats. Sly, what did you want to talk about? <laughs> Grats on your new map. <laughs> Next band aid. Uh, Dancer. Uh, kind of Dancer was a ranged DPS. Yeah. Who the hell expected um, it to be a healer, by the way? <laughs> I thought that no matter what they did for the second job, it was going to be a healer. I didn't specifically think Dancer was like going to be a healer, but I was like, well, if it is going to be Dancer, then I could only guess it's a healer. Okay, okay. So I agree with you there. I totally expected the second job to be a healing class. Once I saw Perfect. that it was Dancer, I did not think it was going to be a healing class because it was Dancer, and Dancer mm -hmm. does other things. Is Dancer can heal in 11 uh the same way a red mage can heal in 11 uh but they're not healers and you wouldn't want them to be your soul healers with the exception of some extreme uh like mana specific parties and stuff like that in in 11 so as soon as i saw dancer i was like there's no way that's a healer it's a dps however i do think whatever that new class was going to be i was fully convinced that it was going to be a healer that it had to be a healer we had this conversation on this very show when stormblood was coming out and we realized the two new classes and we were saying oh shit all right this is adding more dps to the queues which is already a, getting to be a problem we still only have the same numbers of healers and tanks by the census that we reviewed on that show queuing up for any given thing. And now we're spreading them across more DPS. This is the expansion where they're going to fill the gap. They're going to put in a tank and put in a healer. And then in the next one, we'll see more two more DPS. So I fully expected tank healer to get another DPS is kind of surprising to me. Um, I fully expected healer, but as soon as I saw the name Dancer, no way was it going to be a healer, nor do I think it should have been just to put Dancer in and add a healer. Um, yeah. Yeah, and how do you feel like two expansion cycles going in um, 
not having a healer what do you how do you think it will um affect the health the, of the game it's gonna game? hurt i i think i don't think there's any way around this particularly hurting queue times which already if you're dps are abysmal um for a lot of things they are getting really really rough if you're a tank or a healer you don't care you're insta queuing for anything you want to insta you could queue for the oddest fucking thing in the duty finder specific duty and less than five minutes you're going to be in a queue uh in the instance dps is already having such a hard time literally if you try to queue for anything specific dude, dude, it's forever dude, this me, is gonna no, no, hurt no, 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 this no, is no, gonna no, hurt no 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 so let me dude i've been on the jp data centers i get fucking like three to six minute queues on dp it's wonderful <laughs> It's amazing. I instant queued into every alpha scape for normal mode for Omega. I was like, yes. <laughs> oh. And unfortunately, I can't play at four in the morning. So that's <laughs> not going to work for me. <laughs> Honestly, DPS queues haven't really changed at all since the two DPS thing. There's no fucking different than they were before. Stormblood. I think they're going to get worse. I, I think I they'll think be they're... worse for two weeks again, and they won't be because of Gunbreaker. So, and then it'll no, be fine. I think I think this one's going to be a little more prevalent longer. Where Where are you at on this one, Sly? Uh, I don't think. I think there's usually a time, like like you said, there's a time where you can really feel the effects of it, and then it just kind of goes away after a while. I fuck. I give it a patch. Well, anyway, I don't think it'll take that long. A patch. Yeah, just one patch. So chat's bringing up, dude. White Mage is, we're getting his new job. We're getting White Mage. <laughs> After a whole well, everybody's Everybody's going to be rolling them once they see your latest YouTube video, too. So yeah. we're doing our part to push healers into the system. Yeah, those level 50 healers. <laughs> Benediction and Noctis and, and bunnies in Eureka as, as we have been. Oh, that's not a pleasant experience at all. I know it's funny, though. I, I had forgotten about this till they revealed Dancer as a ranged DPS. I'm like, because I had predicted that Dancer was going to be a Chakram wielder, although I personally wanted the Ivy style Chakram of uh, Soul Calibur. Or not, uh, not, not Ivy. Ivy? I yeah. Soul Calibur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's no. not Ivy. It's not Ivy. No, Ivy's, Ivy's, the, Ivy's, 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 Ivy's the sword. She's the, the whips. Ivy's Tira. chain whips. Tira, there you go. She had the chain whip yeah. sword thing. Yeah, Tira, there you go. I was hoping it was going to be like that, not the two one-handers. But in Final Fantasy XI, the level 40 artifact quest for them is a throwing chakra. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, for Ethis, because I didn't know if he was going to be on the show today or not, I did bring a boomerang. Uh, so I brought the tie for Sly, in case he wore a tie. I brought a boomerang. That's for Ethis. He was not on the show, but because uh, I know he wants his dancers with boomerangs. So Can you I try to do my part for that back too. Real quick? Not in here. There is not nearly enough room to do that. Uh, but yes, I can it outside. Yeah, it's, it's because I don't believe. Just believe it'll come back. Actually, I threw a boomerang about six months ago and I haven't seen it since. So I'm really paranoid. I have no idea when it might zip in and hit me. <laughs> you just never know what those things. You're just going to step outside one day. <laughs> <laughs> I go out to smoke. This is all because Happy didn't, didn't invite me on the show. Now I have to smoke outside. <laughs> if I would have been inside. <laughs> Put it on my grave. <laughs> this is Happy's fault. Oh, man. All right. So those those are your two, Sly. Those, you're just ripping off the two, the two main band-aids with that one? Yeah, the two can, main can band-aids. Ask, Did you have anything? Can yeah. I ask you two one? Sure. Sure. I want your opinion, and this is not 14 related. I want your opinion card on game. what is no, not the card game, <laughs> which you can get at your local game store <laughs> for anywhere from 10 to 15 dollars for a starter deck. Get the this, this is the new ones are good, but get the Final Fantasy, the other Final Fantasy 14 one that came out with Opus 5. That one's like nine cards away from being a pretty competitive deck right out of the box. Uh, your local game store, and then if they don't have it, Go ahead online. But LGS first. Um, now, I want your take on, particularly with what we've been kind of bouncing back and forth here with 14 and 11 and 14 and 11, 
What's coming out in 2022, gang? Oh, yeah, there's nothing to do with. There's nothing to do. I don't fucking know. It's, it's, I want to know what you think it is. First of all, he doesn't give a shit. Second of all, I know Sly doesn't. That's why I said I wanted you know your take on it. You, you said you said you too. Oh, well, you I like want you Sly's also. opinion. Yeah, he doesn't care. Sly, come on. What do Sly, we? Got? What, what's what your do opinion? Got? In terms of fourteen or um, no? He wants eleven. What's, what's the twenty-year anniversary thing for eleven? Dying. Hey. <laughs> For the twentieth anniversary, you want one? You want one? Gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good right here. <laughs> Some, someone said 2022 that Eleven's getting mail for here. I think they're just going to do an add-on scenario. They've already said they're doing. They're working with the cutscene technology again to try to relearn it. They're thinking about streamlining the install process. So. Which, uh, thank God, I mean, you know, it's only, what, years 18 years too late, but whatever. Hey, thank God we don't have to use Play Online anymore, gang. Thanks oh, for wait. that. Except you do. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I was sitting there thinking about it when they made that, because it also coincided with Square Enix talking about they are working on their next MMO. Um no, they didn't, they didn't divulge, say it was their next MMO. They didn't divulge any IPs or anything like that, so we have no clue. But so then the first thing is, okay, maybe it's the mobile thing, right? We know that's been in the works for a while, you know, but wait a minute. It's not the dev team that's doing that. That's Nexon that's doing that. So what are they moving the 11 dev team to at the expense of updates in the current 11? Is it a UI revamp? Well, damn, that'd be pretty hard. Oh, you mean the hard. one they promised yeah. for the 10 year anniversary that we never got? Right? That'd be pretty hard, I think, with what they're doing. Is it just an HD reskinning? Is it, I mean, I've seen people going all the way up to it's an 11 2. Now, I would love that, but I don't think it's going to be that. You're a father of two now. You trust me, you wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, right? Right. <laughs> So I, I don't know. I don't, if that happens. I don't think it has anything to do with mobile. That's not being done primarily by the 11 dev team. I don't think it has the capability to be, uh, you know, a 11 two or even a, a new engine two, a new engine 11. That just doesn't make sense. It's a, a lot of work for that stuff. Although I'd love to see them get it off of the damn PlayStation two dev kits before they're all dead. Um, so I, I think that leaves what you're talking about, Happy. Either some type of in-game event or, for lack of a better word, mini expansion, maybe? Like a Add mini scenario. Yeah, a mini expansion. Like Rhapsody's but then, was. Right, but then Rhapsody's like wrapped, <laughs> wrapped almost everything <laughs> up. So what the hell do you do with it? I, I don't know. Who cares? It's a fucking fantasy MMO. You just make some bullshit up. So, oh, something else bad is happening. Oh, right. So the, we're allowed to... You're totally fine then with just making up shit to fit whatever you That's were able to develop. That's what a video game is. Okay. So <laughs> the, the more reasons why we can't have made up shit. male Viera and female Rothgar totally fly with you. Gotcha. Okay, there great. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Got it. All right, All right. So we agree. It's probably just a mini addition. Yeah, yeah. Which would, be, which would be some event. Nothing to do with 14. Or, hey, you're going to get uh, 200 extra skill points. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Sly, when are you going to start playing 11 slot? <laughs> uh, let me check my calendar. <laughs> oh, no. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. September 11th. Oh shit! All right, I'll put it in mine too. Yeah, September September one team. It might have to compete with patch thirteen point one when the Omega six difficulty raid comes out and he comes back <laughs> to look for the rabbit that his grandfather left him. But yeah, yeah, it, we can probably work it in about that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Cool. <laughs> his copy's eleven of eleven to the top of the Kugane Tower. <laughs> <laughs> and that shit ain't ever going anywhere then oh yep. man okay uh so i did have one but we got really sidetracked one more thing i wanted to ask for actually i was ready for it and then burn asked me about 11 of all i things. did I, I had to take the opportunity and so now i can't remember what
what it fucking was. <laughs> Shit. I was really excited to ask it, too. Now we, Was it? You know what it is? You interrupted me, was so it, I'd have to invite you on. Was it Blue Mage? Is that what it was? You know, that's a good thing to bring up, though, because you, as an 11 player, Blue Mage obviously had, uh, had to have had some degree of... Uh, I'm going to assume without getting your opinion first that you did not like it in 14. Without knowing, I'm, I would assume off the top of the head you did not like it. Sly, what's your guess? See, just like Ethis, I bring the trivia. The trivia is what am I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if that works. Do you think I was okay with it? Liked it? Hated it? I'm going to say that you were indifferent. Uh, Sly gets the point. I was actually indifferent on it. So going into it, that's why he's got the Sogar. Yeah, I, I was um, with all the announcements and everything leading into it. I was excited. I love Blue Mage from Final Fantasy XI. Red Mage main, but also played uh, a lot of Blue Mage. Um, I could see and happy. We had talked about this long, long ago that we saw challenges with Blue Mage as one of the potential jobs we saw challenges with being introduced into 14 the way uh, Duty Finder works with certain party makeups and maintaining the feel of a Blue Mage while making it fit so that you wouldn't say things like, well, we'd rather take a Red Mage than a Blue Mage. You know, how do you fit that mold? So I was totally cool with the way they implemented it. I like the idea of, hey, this is going to be solo content. It's kind of a nod to fans who want this job. It's something else to do when you're there alone. Okay, I was all on board. Then it came out, uh, and I messed around, and the first hour or so, you had the nostalgia feel of learning a few things from some monsters, and it was really cool and everything. There were some aggravating grinds later in it to try and get some things, of course, and that was annoying, but, you know, <laughs> they still weren't anywhere near as bad as most of the grinds to get those spells in Final Fantasy XI, so you still had me. The problem that I saw with it and where I kind of went, eh, now it misses the mark for me is I don't really see a reason why this couldn't have just been a DPS class at the end of the day with a few spells tweaked and shut off in certain scenarios. And, and there you go. Uh, I think it's setting up a cool feature, but at the end of the day, it just, and I've said that twice today. So uh, at the end of the night, uh, it just left me lukewarm. I had some nice nostalgia for an hour or two, and then I kind of didn't care about it anymore. That's why I'm hoping when it hits 60, it could do Palace of the Dead, because I would solo 200 on Blue Mage. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of content for yeah. me on Blue Mage if I'm solo trying to do it mm -hmm. for 200 solo, because I ain't doing it on Red Mage, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to see where it goes. Uh, and where the whole limited job system can go, because there's no way they put this in for one job. Plus They're going to utilize this for other jobs in the okay. future. Mm -hmm. I, I want to see more of this and where they go with it. I don't, you know, it, right now I'm just, Meh, okay, that was fun. Off to something else. I, now we know Mike has a request for this, but like what? Uh, I would imagine Beastmaster. Puppet. Yeah. Master. There we go. Puppet. Oh, you want pop? Puppet. But I don't want it to be limited. <laughs> yeah, he wants it in I actual want it as to, an actual god. I want as it actual to be job. a tank, and I want it to be a tank. And when it blocks, it just picks the puppet up and holds it like Peach and Smash Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> you want you some pop, huh? Yeah, man. <laughs> Yeah. I don't okay. know. I I miss the days of two beast ma uh, beast master BCNMs and things like that. So I I'd probably beast first. But, but yeah, sure, Pop, why not? I mean, I think Beast would come first, but I don't want it to be limited. I think so, too. Yeah, I agree. I don't want any of them to be limited, but I, and I bought the whole argument of if we want it to feel like a blue mage, there are things that it just doesn't jive with our system. You and I wholeheartedly have bought into that debate in, you know, pre 2.0 and just after 2.0 where, hey, these specialized jobs that we'd love to see, they just don't work without it turning into, I don't want to take a bard, we want a pup. Uh, I don't want to take a red mage, we want to take a blue mage. And Yoshi P 
hates that. You know, he hates that role specific or role desirable trait. And so he we hates were meta. willing. Then he hates they, they, MMOs because that's like literally you have seventeen jobs. And he hates eight jobs for raids. He hates fucking. meta. He hates meta. I mean, and, I, and hate, I understand that is bullshit too, but you can't avoid the fact yeah. that your party size is eight for the hardcore content and there's 17 jobs. And yes, I said 17, not 18. Sorry, Blue Mage. All right. <laughs> but I felt at the end, the Blue Mage, there was no reason it couldn't have just been a DPS unless I'm severely missing sister, something in the architecture of uh, the back end of Final Fantasy 14. There were like, four spells that in my mind I would have said okay shut that off you can't use that in certain scenarios but other than that let it DPS queue I, I don't see a reason why not uh, have you done being the more in depth and more hardcore ish than I have you done any like DPS testing on dummies with it's blue terrible. mage compared to anything it's so you bad. know yeah. It's really bad. Like, I think you can pull it with, like, really good. Like, Precise is, like, 400 DPS at level 50. I was doing 600 at the same item level as, like, yeah. like 5 to 550 is Bard. And, like, Monk was doing over 600 on 100% uptime situations in the same item level. Right. And, and the whole thing was before they came out, they said, you know, we don't. These there's certain spells that a blue mage is going to get that we can't use for the and then in the course of you know, the masquerade and everything they shut it off. They <laughs> They're just like yeah, these don't work by the way, and I'm like, right. That was like the whole argument for not putting it as a straight DPS job was we want to give you abilities that would would break the game in other places, so it's going to be a limited job. And then in the process of the limited job cut off some of those abilities to be, to anyway be because fair, they broke what they were trying to do the carnival was a lot i actually think the carnival was a lot of fun it was, it was over way too quick but i thought the carnival had a lot of I great agree. ideas including including achievement tracking that is significantly improved over the rest of the game in the form of the three special achievements for doing the fights in specific ways end I of the day i had nice nostalgia for a few hours a day or so I think it could be moved into a DPS queue with just some tweaking, and obviously they'd have to work the rotation a little bit to make it a little more DPS viable. But I'm hopeful where it goes. But Sly, as of right now, you get the point. It left me lukewarm I forgot after it was point. all over. I forgot, I forgot there was a point in the wall. Yeah, yeah a little mini air Zivia here. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, let's see. Uh, That's still not that you thing. have any... And that was not yeah, that, that was wasn't the thing. thing. That wasn't the thing at all. <laughs> that is no relation. Uh, but I am going to quickly move over to the last point, probably before we wrap up the show. And okay. we kind of touched on it a little bit early, but we have the we already had the European data center split into chaos and light. North America a week from today will be getting not only the North American split into Ether, Crystal, and Primal, with Crystal being the new one, we'll also be getting a world visiting where you'll be able to physically go to the other servers. And while there are some limitations, it's uh, still something that is, a, I guess, a, a pretty big step for Final Fantasy XIV as much as it comes at kind of a, I guess, not even an unfortunate time, but probably the the most awkward time hey we're gonna divide all of you so you can not visit your friends when you visit their servers that aren't on your data centers anymore right um do we think this is happening at a bad time do you, are you, how do you think it's it's a, something that kind of needs to happen would you have preferred to move over to the one mega data center structure especially with world visiting where where do you stand on this are you losing any friends to this no no uh, i think i'm all for this actually um however i think it's being done at the absolute wrong time um i think this should have come 5.2 5.3 ish uh when we're already well into the expansion you've already had the peak of the expansion and the plateau of player base that happens months a month or two after the expansions um I think trying to, I just think it, it's kind of silly to do anything that stabilizes population a few months prior to a huge population spike and then a population decrease. I think that's kind of silly. Uh, unless your numbers are forecasting, hey, after we spike and fall three or four months after the expansion, we expect our population to be where it is right now. 
okay, if they have the data to prove that, then then go for it and do it. Because I do think it does need to happen. There are data center population issues that need to be addressed. I just think the timing without that kind of data is a little off. So I would agree with you on most parts, except for the timing. Because as a hardcore raider, I knew that if my data center was splitting right as an ultimate was about to drop, I'd be pretty fucking pissed. <laughs> oh, I know, but this is the same argument for fucking Blue Mage, man. I'm sick of the entire game, be and I'm a raider, granted, not uh, Blue Garter or, or even your level of get in there and clear it on day one. I'll clear it whenever the fuck I clear it. I pay to play the game and enjoy it, and I'll farm a casual or a, an extreme for hours and hours and hours, but I'm going to do it on my schedule. Uh, I hate, and you know this, Happy, you, you know this, I hate big decisions in the game being based on that 5 to 10% of your high-end raider crowd and what might piss them off and what might make them upset. I think Blue Mage factored into this. That, that was a huge factor into this. Uh, population, I don't think that's factoring into this particular se- decision to do the data center now. I, I wouldn't think that the rating schedule would be too much of a factor behind there. I can see why it might make you upset, uh, but I think they're doing this now for other reasons, probably architecture related uh, rather than straight data related. But I just want to throw that in there. Stop making your decisions because of what Mr. Happy fucking wants. See, now I'm... <laughs> I want, I, I want you oh, to stop Oh, wow. Smoking. Can we get that clip, that's, please? That's what I want. I want oh, if it was, my thing is, if it was going to be before 5.0, it probably should have been three to four months ago. Uh, at this point, but, I, I think no, it's I a bit... No, I agree with that. Awesome. I agree three three months ago, like, not two months out from the expansion. In the middle, In the middle of content, though? Like, I feel like this is a good time because there's nothing going on. Like, you have, we have nothing to look forward to in 4.0 anymore. So, I th- feel like well, this is the perfect time. On that, I, on that front, yeah. I can't argue with you on that front. You know, it is very, all right, we're done. The expansion's, you know, what, 90% done at this point, getting ready to, to print and, and stamp and disc and box and, and start sending shit to distributors. Um, so let's take this time and get this done now because we're going to have our own slew of problems after 5.0 that we're going to be busy mm-hmm. on. I get that. And a few months ago, there were patches going on. This is a nice dead time development wise and architecture wise right. to do it. I don't think it's the most convenient on the player base. Okay. Fair, point. Fair enough. Fair enough. I just hope that their ultimate goal of no Ralbon Extreme <laughs> right. comes true. I'm not. I'm not. Let's let's be real. It's not. I'm not the most optimistic, but I would. I would hope. Maybe. Shit's always gonna break. Happy. What? What the fuck? Yeah, but maybe it won't. You're. You're definitely optimistic. Maybe it okay. won't. If that's optimism in 2019, then that, yeah, that's optimism. <laughs> then fucking millennials, <Maybe>. dude. <laughs> and I'm one of them. <laughs> that's fucked. <laughs> to be fair, I guess 40 years ago, optimism wasn't a vocab wasn't in the vocabulary. So okay. So with all that, I think that covers all of the points. I still don't never remember. You, uh, I never remembered. Yeah. No. Damn. I never remembered what it was I wanted to ask about. I mean, we got Viera, we got Rothgar, we got Blue Mage, we got... uh, Fat Cats? No, what? Why would I want to ask him about Fat Cats? I don't know, maybe... Not even Fat Cats, Fat Makote. We went over Noctis, we went over Dancer, we went over the lack of a healer. We're not going to talk about PvP. I like the tank. Uh, I'm fine with that. Okay. Um... Yeah. Oh, we're forgetting PvP. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so unless you can think of something, I, I know none of those things are the things I was going to ask about. So it had nothing to, it had nothing to do with the, the source or anything? Or it, like, no, no. Just, was it game related or was it Square Enix related? No, it was or? Final Fantasy XIV related. Was I just don't related. know what it was. It clearly wasn't that important because if it was, I would have remembered it. Uh, what, It wasn't about this one. it was 100 percent not about that okay okay yeah hmm. oh yes it was your 
That's what it was. It was what did you think about the about Near having a raid? Yes, that's what it was. I liked Near. Okay, but how do you feel about it in 14? I don't care. <laughs> What's this? All right, well, you got the PvP answer, apparently. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll go and do it. I mean, it's just like asking what I thought about Monster Hunter in there and all that. And I know, obviously, bigger. Um, but, you know, okay, so the 24-man stuff was uh, Ivalice related. That's not... 14 related when you think about it Final at the end Fantasy, of the day and i still but it's I still not enjoy too far that. off the mark right it's not too it's, far off the mark i get it i'm fine with it why bitch about new content if it's content you don't like don't fucking do it <laughs> true I like, I like true my like my only concerns with it is that like it's in Immersion. comparison to everything oh that. come on we lost immersion four years ago Really? I'm, I'm when, you, when you think about it, when you think about it, like all the other content when, in terms of 24 man content have been Final Fantasy based. This is the only thing that. Yeah, yeah I mean, Crystal, Crystal Tower, Ivalice, all that stuff. Right, right. The only concern is things slip between the cracks, um, lore wise, and you might not even give a shit about lore. Oh, no. No, I have. But, oh, no, no, no. See, that's something I do very much care about. I love the. Not to ethicism. You cut off. By the, the way, you're cutting off the, more and more with the audio gating. I'm not sure why. Hello. <laughs> no, we heard. Oh. We can hear you now, but we lost like three words in there. Like okay. Three okay. whole words. Uh, no, I mean I love the lore. Not, I mean I have encyclopedias <laughs> and all of that stuff. What's that? What's so funny now? It happened again. <laughs> what is? I'm. He? I'm. My microphone's ruining your immersion. Um, <laughs> it just happened when you said immersion. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it happening so much more now? I have my sensitivity at 100%. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Fuck it. Just didn't make your point. I don't care anymore. Yeah, it's. I'm totally fine with it. There, there's stuff that I'm willing to accept that, hey, this is part of the lore, and I'm going to get into that more. And yeah, this might be a little off kilter and not exactly fit with this world, but it's cool content, yeah. and I'm going to do it. Or it's not cool content, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not here yeah. bitching, telling you you shouldn't do PvP. They shouldn't waste time developing PvP. They shouldn't. They, they blah 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 blah. I'm just telling you, I don't like PvP, that. so I don't do it. Start of the show. Almost makes the difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. Oh, just because it says broken and it shouldn't be in there, you know, that doesn't mean it shouldn't be in there. <laughs> there we go. Just because I said it shouldn't be in there doesn't mean it shouldn't be in there. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's not exactly canonical and, and that stuff, but again, it's a Square Enix game. It's one I've enjoyed. I like having all my little nods to my stuff in in one game and if the content sucks guess what they're gonna get that feedback they're not gonna do it again and what we'll have something floating in the duty finder that nobody ever queues up for oh trust me it doesn't matter if that's if people don't like the near thing they're gonna fucking do it they won't they're gonna queue up. <laughs> no one's gonna be like oh i'm gonna rebel against the 24 ends no no one's gonna do that this isn't pvp come on what are you doing? Do you do you have the Cackpot game? Did you buy that? That has cackpot? nothing to do with anything right now. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm, well, later. I'm sorry. <laughs> and no, I don't. Yeah, it's almost like they put useful things in there. So no one thinks. So. I just hope that it's done with class because I I I was left with Omega. <laughs> no, I mean that because Omega I thought was done terribly. Integrated into fourteen, like Omega is like a Final Fantasy classic, and he was t terribly implemented in the final fantasy 14 so, uh i agree i do agree so uh, i i want implementation that was bad but i, I want I just like to be better. just do it with class what the <laughs> fuck we're talking about floating eyeball computers we're talking about people shooting things down from the sky we're talking about noctis flip just do it with class what put on a bow tie yoshi i guess that's what haps wants i mean have you ever seen him in the, the bow tie jacket. at the uh, at the 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 orchestras Looks good in the bow tie. Perry is right. Can I get my four fiends at least? I've been really thinking we were going to get the four fiends this expansion. I don't need more. <laughs> I really thought we were going to get the four fiends this expansion. No, Final Fantasy IV or four, four fiends in particular. We still could. Maybe they're primals. Who knows? 
Could still get it. I want it. Rubiconte, we can't attack him while he has his cloak or he fucks your day. There you go. Ooh, wait. Ooh, Don't tell me you have a Rubiconte card back there. Oh, no, no, no somebody's calling me. I do have, there, there is a Rubiconte. <laughs> all all I four fiends are in there. One. Yeah. Oh, have... yeah. Oh, you have cards, but you don't play. Oh, I, just, I just have them to have them. I'm going to sell them. them on eBay. I ain't going to get much for that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, I know I won't. I already looked. I was like, wow, this card most wow. looks rare. Is it, I'm here pitching something that he's telling everybody, oh, yeah, I'm trying to sell the shit I have. <laughs> Yo, exactly. I'm trying to make some money on this advertisement right now, okay? I was like, I'll sell you 20 random cards. I won't even look. There might be a good one in there. Who knows? I used to do that with Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I'd sell just like 75 rando cards. I'd just pick them out randomly out of my non hollows and just sell them on eBay for like five bucks. Maybe it'd be something people wanted, and it was something I certainly didn't want. Then again, I also sold sold Dark Arm Dragon and for a Crush card for like three or four hundred dollars each. So, do you do you have the Chocobo Crystal game? I don't. No, I don't. The answer is no. The answer is always no. Okay, I'm just saying it's no. Okay. I don't know why I walked away. <laughs> the answer is no. I don't have it. I don't know what you, I don't know. You don't, you don't have that one? No, I don't have that one. Oh, God. I don't collect things. Believe it or not, most of that oh. I didn't buy. <laughs> oh, that that wall is just drawn on. Don't I don't I don't actually it's own it. It's a green it. screen. <laughs> it's a green screen. There you go. <laughs> All right. I think with that, gentlemen, we're just at about the two hour mark. So I think we can uh, do with a bit of a wrap up, do a five minute post show, and call it a night. Sound good? Yes, sir. That's great. All right, Mr. Byrne, thank you for joining us. Maybe I'll nice. invite you on again at some point <laughs> in the before a year from now. It's possible. Uh, I know I gave you a lot of time at the start of the show, but in case yeah. anyone forgot already, where can they find you at? Uh, no, thank you, Haps and Sly. It's always nice to be here with you, gang, uh, talking about Final Fantasy XIV, the game we love. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, you can check me out personally on my own YouTube channel. Uh, that's uh, Mike Byrne, Claude Magic Man. Um, on Twitch is Magic Man One, and on Twitter is at Magic Man One. M A G I C K M A N N One. Most of my content right now is TCG related, but there are 14 videos on there as well, and it's always good to hang out with you guys. Happy to do it whenever you want to. And chat, I love you for welcoming me and bringing the stakes. Yes. It's Berg time after this. All right. All right, Sly. They get to see you every week, but you still got to tell them where to find you. I uh, burn again. Thank you so much for for coming out. I I know it's it's like a it's like a yearly holiday for us <laughs> whenever you come on. And, it, it's like criminal. <laughs> yeah, like, Roland, it's like Christmas. Yeah. Um, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Sly AK Gray Fox, uh, Instagram Sly AK Gray Fox 07, uh, Twitter at Sly the Fox, YouTube.com slash the Velvet Room. Um, yeah, you see me all the time. I play too many goddamn games and that's not going to change anytime soon. No. Um, but Haps, where can they find you? You can find me, Mr. Happy127, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all at the same. I'm doing a bunch of basic final fantasy 14 videos soon because i've realized just how little square enix shows people some of these features that are in the game i have to do a treasure map video when world visits come out to remind people that exists i got to show people how to earn mgp like you know kyoko's post but i'm going to throw more things in there and i got to do a guide for the garuda instance i didn't think this hashtag, day would come hashtag roll white mage white mage yeah. i'm not I'm white mage guy i'm not doing it I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Either way, uh, it's going to be busy for me for the next uh, couple of weeks in particular. Risk of Rain 2 has been a big topic for me. Sly, and Sly, myself, Fusion from Gamer Escape, and Kerr and I, one of our patrons of light, just finished playing through Borderlands 1 and all the DLC. And I showed them that my pistol that they were laughing at the whole game was nothing to be fucked about with. I wasn't laughing at it. I was just saying that shit was stupid broken. Yeah, it was funny, though. It was. And we're going to be playing Borderlands 2 starting next Wednesday. Uh, we're just trying to get uh, a little bit of time in for it in advance because Sly and I are also attending uh, Borderlands 3 gameplay 
reveal event. We're going to be playing together there, yeah. bringing back some <laughs> gameplay and footage there. So Sly and I will get some pictures in there for BL3, for Borderlands 3. We'll be bringing back some gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> Burns like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Gameplay. I was channeling my inner uh, uh, Henry Winkler. Gatorade. <laughs> H2O. There you go. That's got to follow up with it. Um, there's one other thing I guess I, I wanted to shout out. I can't remember what it was. I mean, the Avengers Endgame comes out, but that's unrelated, I suppose. Oh, well, I want to I'm going to go see that, too. Either way, that's what we got going on right now. And Final Fantasy XI has its free login next month. So I've been playing it before that anyway. No, I already mentioned the giveaways. I mentioned those at the start of the show. Don't forget about them all the same. The giveaways you mentioned at the top of the show. Because if you don't enter them, you don't win them. Burn, you better not be going to fucking enter it right now. And that better not be what you're typing in. Because <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> He's like, oh, thanks for reminding me. That's right. I got to enter the second oh, one. I forgot. I if forgot. you win, hey, listen, if we, if you, Burn is on the show again in the next in the next six weeks, you know he won. Okay? <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So thank you to our sponsor, Steel Series. Thank you to NVIDIA for the giveaway that Burn is desperately trying to win. And again, thank you to our Patreon sponsors. But that's going to be a wrap for us. I don't know what next week's show is about yet. Sly will figure something out. We always do. And if not, fuck it. Anyway, so that's a wrap. We'll move over in the post show and we will see you guys next time. Thank you again, Burn, for coming on. And until then, thank bye you. Bye. See you next week.